uh, John Jerem. Can you uh, tell me, uh, you are a scientist or what? your position? Yeah, so I'm an associate professor in educational and social statistics at the UCL Institute of Education. At what university? Uh, the UCL Institute of Education. Okay. This is in London or somewhere? Uh, yeah, it's at the University of London. Okay. Uh, what was your uh, talk about at this conference? So my talk was about a randomized controlled trial that we had just completed in England where we went into schools and uh, evaluated 30 hours of chess lessons to look at the impact on children's academic outcomes one year after the programme had finished. Yeah, you're talking about lasting. Uh, how that mean, with lasting you mean uh, what happens after one year? What is the situation? Yeah, what happens one year after children have been taught 30 hours of te chess instruction? And what we found was so that was basically no impact upon their mathematics test scores, their reading test scores, or their science test scores. They were not. Yeah, and then um, you had a big uh, group uh, and a control group, so about 100 schools. Yeah, so 100 schools took part in the intervention, in the trial. And about 2,000 kids? It was about 4,000 children with 2,000 children in the control group who weren't given chess and about 2,000 children in the treatment group who were given 30 hours of chess. The outcomes of your research were different from some other research you taught. Yeah, so the previous research has found uh, a fairly big effect of chess on children's uh, particularly mathematic outcomes. There's several possible explanations for why we know find no effect and other studies have found an effect. It's difficult to tease out which one is correct, but it could be the fact that we tested one year after the intervention was finished rather than directly at the end. It could be due to the fact that our tests were national examinations, whereas previous research have used what we call low stakes examinations where children in schools don't have riding on the results, uh, or it could be to do with differences in implementation, say. So there are differences in the findings. We're not quite sure what the actual reason is. Yeah, and I was thinking about, I did some research myself in 92 uh, when I finished the University of Amsterdam. Um, and I had uh, a database of Eight years kids, group eight, uh, 278. A friend of mine was a school teacher, a director, and he had yeah. all this. And he had also uh, the competition. He was uh, running a chess club. And uh, we find, uh, I found uh, the, the children who play chess are the better um, in calculation. But of course, there can be self selection effect yeah. because. Uh, when you are in uh, your family is more academically yeah. orientated, etc., then you start playing chess and so. Uh, but uh, how was it in your study? Uh, the, the beginning situation, uh, because you have control group, but some of the kids maybe play chess, some of them uh, don't play chess. Yeah, and that's already. true. But that's part of the benefit of us doing an experiment, a randomised control trial because what you do when you randomly assign schools or individuals to a treatment group mm. and a control group is that those things should on average balance out. So you should see that children in the control group are very similar to children in the treatment group. You can do some checks on that. We did some checks on that and we find that they're very similar in terms of family background, prior achievement measures, yeah. gender. So the random assignment deals with the issue that you've uh, just raised. Yeah, but what you you looked at effects on academical achievements, yeah. which is say uh, reading, science, yeah. and another one? Mathematics. Mathematics, yeah. Okay, I'm a teacher at the moment uh, at highly gifted schools, I teach chess, but I tell the people uh, the chess has a metaphor of life, it has advantages 
on four, four fields, and it's due to um, the intrinsic value of the game, but yep. also the way of how didactics makes the difference. And yep. the combination H is nothing, O is nothing, but H2O makes water. Yep. You see, so the, the combination can be of it. And then I tell them, uh, it has on four fields, it has advantages, social, emotional, cognitive, metacognitive. You are talking only about cognitive at the moment, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's right. And we don't look at any of those wider outcomes. Again, it comes back to when you do an experiment, what you do is basically say, I'm testing this, I'm looking at this as the outcome, and my focus, my primary focus is on this. So we didn't collect data on anything like uh, social or emotional skills. We kind of don't add any value or any information on that particular aspect of the literature. So it could well be the fact that chess does have an impact on those things. Yeah, because I think one of the first, re first researchers in this field was Professor Adrian de Groot from the Netherlands. You are aware of his research? Yes. Yeah, I, I interviewed the, the, the man beginning of the 90s and, well, he wrote an uh, article, it was translated, a memorandum, it was translated, uh, he wrote it in English, I think, actually. It was called uh, Chess Instruction in Schools. And then he already mentioned uh, the, the, that possibly the added value should be sought in uh, the, the, the social-emotional uh, field. Yeah. Yeah. But what? Uh, but why didn't? What was the reason you did this research? So the reason why we didn't go down the half of looking at social and emotional skills was because we wanted to do this at a large scale yeah. simply because a lot of the existing research looking at the impact on cognitive outcomes was very small scale around about 50 children rather than say the 4,000 that we have and to get reliable measures of social and emotional skills. So you didn't understand that most of the research is about small groups? You very, say. very small. Okay, this, small this is the size. improvement. Yeah, and we, and we have 4,000, so we're much, much bigger sample. I think there was last year they presented here this meta um, from this woman from uh, St. Louis. Uh, on which particular study? They did a meta analysis? Yeah. So they do, did do a meta-analysis, which I've just spoken about in the presentation. Mm -hmm. The trouble is, what that does is take 25 very, very small studies and tries to combine the evidence together. But there's limitations to that, and when all the existing studies are very, very, very small, it's not necessarily the fact that you can just simply combine them. You so you multiply the, the shortcomings in yeah. a way. Yeah. Um, but to come back to the original point, why didn't we go down to kind of cognitive, uh, only looked at cognitive and not social and emotional skills? Mm -hmm. It's because we have 4,000 children, and to try and get reliable measures on social and emotional skills for 4,000 children is expensive, time consuming, and you're highly likely to kind of fail to properly engage with those um, schools and children who didn't receive chess, who were in the control group. So. That's why we focus very much on the academic outcomes. So the schools that don't receive the chess yeah. treatment, often it's hard to collect data from them uh -huh. because they haven't received the treatment. So what's in them for? What's in it for them? Exactly. And so when you can go out and collect social and emotional yeah. skills information, which is typically through questionnaires, what you or a survey, what you're likely to get is a lot of non-respondents, people who don't fill in the surveys for you. And trying to do that on a scale of 4,000 children, it's just not practical. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. But in the first place, why did you start this research? We started this research because the, the Education Endowment Foundation, which is an organisation here in England, funded this study into the impact of chess on attainment based on prior evidence drawing heavily on a study uh, from Italy where they did find an effect on chess. So they wanted to know whether it really does have an effect on chess potentially in this country 
and we got involved to make sure that the evaluation design was as robust as could possibly be. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you have these outcomes. And you work also with chess in schools. They help you for the, with the schools, I think. Are you collaborating with them? Yeah, so the chess in schools uh, group here in England, they should take all the credit because they basically uh, ran the intervention in the school. So they put in a lot of work. They were the ones who were running the study and were the ones on the ground delivering it. So we were just the people behind the scenes designing and evaluating and it was their kind of program that really was implemented in the schools. Yeah, and you were telling uh, during your lecture something about newspaper headlines. Uh, yeah, so I was um, unaware about how much the Chess and Schools program got into the headlines. I think there was a lot of discussion about the differences between the amount of negative attention, perhaps, that the chess intervention got, the results of the chess intervention, versus one that's recently been done on the impact of philosophy on children's academic outcomes, where it says there was an effect. My personal view is that there's no particular evidence on the merits of philosophy versus yeah. chess. That could be an interesting direction for a study in the future, but I don't think the evidence is currently there. So what uh, is the conclusion? Uh, what can we, uh, the world, the chess world, you, chess in schools, uh, what can they do with the outcome uh, of your research? I think there's kind of two things that are the main implications of our research. Firstly, we need to question the conventional wisdom and question what has been found in previous research which was a fairly big impact. I think our study shows that the impact is at least likely to be smaller and is unlikely to be sustained, I would say, uh, over a period of time. I think the second main implication is, as Malcolm was just saying, I think it's helped the charity learn and for perhaps them to go on and do another study where they um, change aspects of the intervention, work more closely with the tutors and hopefully develop the scheme further to s go out and kind of see again if there's any change to the results or if there's any impact on other skills as well. Yeah. By the way, you are chess players yourself? I'm not a chess player. <laughs> Well, what I always wondered when I was, uh, I, I, I made a book, um, it's called uh, Roots Several, this is uh, Scholzschaken, uh, okay. yes. in it uh, I make, uh, I summarize 50 uh, scientific researches about, and then I, they, what I'm still wondering about, and also in this research, People say, do you teach chess or not? Okay, do you teach chess, but what is uh, teaching chess? The French opening, mm -hmm. the tactics, game analysis. Uh, so what method do you? And I think this can be, make a world of diff uh, difference, a world of difference. What, the way you teach chess and the, and the content of these trainings. Yeah. And do uh, the didactical forms. Uh, do uh, let uh, let kids work in duos or uh, discovery learning or frontal explanation yeah and all these kind of things I think can be make a, a great difference also in the outcome and in the cognitive result the results of your research I agree and that's why in any social science or educational setting generalizing the fo making very big generalized conclusions of chess works as chess doesn't work is difficult because there's different ways that you can teach and there's different ways the intervention can be managed and perhaps it is a matter of if your aim is to improve children's cognitive outcomes teaching them to play chess in a different way might have slightly more or slightly less of an effect so that's probably another direction for more work. Maybe also there are subpopulations. Sorry? Subpopulations. 
separate populations. Uh, separate populations. So maybe uh, when you look at the, at the facts, they can be small. Yeah. But maybe for the most intelligent kids or uh, the dumbest ones, or maybe uh, just uh, the transgenders, just to mention uh, <laughs> a group. Maybe for uh, such a group it works, but uh, when you make an average, you don't see the effect. Sure, so we did do some research into that, we did look at that, and we looked at boys versus girls, we looked at um, low socioeconomic status children, mm -hmm. we looked at how well the intervention was delivered in some sense within the schools, and we also looked at children of different levels of prior ability, and for all those different groups, we found very little. So it wasn't just a headline finding. On average, there doesn't seem to be any impact. It was for these different subpopulations as well. So as far as we could look at that. So it did seem a more general finding in that sense. Yeah. It wasn't, say, a positive for boys being off weight by a negative for girls. True. Yeah. It wasn't the case that a positive for boys yeah. being... Eliminated by yeah negative effect so two effects uh, make, yeah. yeah so it wasn't that it was very much you know the same same for both genders for instance uh, but you said also maybe um, for chasing schools conclusion can be they can uh, change some things in, the, in their program but you have some particular advices for them uh, I don't have any particular advice actually we had another team of researchers who went into the schools who looked at that kind of qualitative aspect of things. Um, they've written up in the report some of kind of their advice that they would give to the kind of um, the chess tutors and uh, chess in schools in particular. I think part of it was around kind of um, lesson management and kind of behavior management of children, particularly working with these disadvantaged children. Yeah, that's more about classroom management. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So there could be some things. But there's like another uh, thing we discussed uh, from uh, do we the French opening or the tactics or uh, yeah, sure. This you can only find out by some experiments, probably. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, we come to an end. Uh, is there something uh, I, uh, I no. left? You no, think no, no. I discovered think the, the topic? I, I think that's perfect. <laughs> Sorry. I think perfect. Perfect. Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. I'm just going to nip in and catch yeah. it in the end of that.